Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Dingo channel. My name is Zali. In previous videos, I have already gone through the dingo's important ecological role as our top order predator and how they are incredibly different to domestic dogs, as well as their different color variations and ecotypes and even dingo history. So if you haven't already checked those ones out, be sure to go and do that after this video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the misleading term wild dog, what it actually means and why we need to stop using it. This is going to be a more serious and confronting video, probably not okay for kids. So with that said, let's get into the video. I'm now going to get into the major issues that are preventing dingoes from being properly protected. They are found right across the mainland in Australia, including in Victoria, and unfortunately, due to a lot of misinformation and the misleading term wild dog, they are continuously targeted in wild dog control programs. Dingoes are the most misrepresented and persecuted of all native Australian species, simply because they can, under some circumstances, negatively impact on livestock farming. When most people hear the term wild dog, they associate this with an introduced feral species that is going around and killing livestock. The term wild dog for this reason is very misleading because it does actually encompass dingoes. According to the National Wild Dog Action Plan, the wild dog definition is all wild living dogs, which include dingoes, feral dogs, and their hybrids. This is very problematic because we know from DNA studies that 99% of wild dogs are admixed dingoes or true dingoes where admix means that they carry mostly dingo ancestry and some dog ancestry. To explain this further, out of more than 5,000 DNA samples, only 31 were feral dogs with no dingo ancestry. That's just 0.5%. And on top of this, just 27 were dingo dog first generation hybrids. So this means that 99% of those free roaming canids or those so-called wild dogs are actually fulfilling that important ecological role as our only top order land predator. The takeaway from this is that we need to be shifting away from that misleading and incorrect term wild dog. By calling dingoes wild dogs, their ecological, historical and cultural importance is devalued. I am now going to go through some examples of legislation across Australia that is contributing to the vilification of the dingo. To allow for the protection and conservation of dingoes in remote areas, as well as provide for the legal control of wild dogs, dingoes have been declared unprotected under the Wildlife Act. In Victoria, the dingo is supposed to be a protected species because it is listed as a threatened species under the Flora and Fauna Guarantee Act. However, the dingo is unprotected on all private land and within three kilometers of private land. In addition to dingoes being unprotected in most areas across Victoria, there is also a bounty on dingoes as well. Of course, this is called a wild dog bounty. In New South Wales, under the Rural Lands Protection Act and the Wild Dog Destruction Act, the dingo is classified as a wild dog and land owners are required to cull them. In Western Australia, the dingo must be controlled in livestock areas. In Queensland, the dingo is declared a pest. In South Australia, the dingo is declared a pest inside or south of the dingo fence. In the National Wild Dog Action Plan, they also use that term introduced, which if you've watched my first video, you'll know that this is actually also an incorrect term. So as you can tell, there are definitely blurred lines between where dingoes are protected and where wild dogs are controlled or killed. Many people are unaware that in these wild dog control programs, dingoes are actually being targeted. If in a lot of these programs, they were blatantly saying that they're killing dingoes, most of the public would generally not be okay with this. So what can we be doing to properly protect dingoes? The first thing that you can do as an individual is go and sign petitions. There are plenty of petitions gaining momentum. I will link these petitions below. We need to be scrapping this bounty. It is insane that people right now are receiving $120 for killing Australia's largest top order land predator. And education, education is so, so important. One of the main reasons that dingoes continue to be killed is because of misinformation. 
I have met people who have actually shot black and tan dingoes because they simply did not know that they are pure dingoes. So this is the whole reason that I'm making these videos. It's one of the main reasons that the Australian Dingo Foundation exists today is to educate people. I'm hoping that you guys can go and talk to your family and talk to friends and share these videos so that we can get a better understanding of the dingo in Australia and hopefully get them better protected into the future. I do want to encourage discussions about this very controversial topic so please let me know what you think and start some conversations in the comments section below. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to learn all about dingoes. Woo! <laughs>